I found my doppelganger, and my life hasn't been the same since. Part 1. The Unsettling Photo It all started with a single photograph. One evening, out of the blue, my friend Laura texted me, asking if I had a twin. I laughed, feeling certain that she was joking because I'm an only child. But then she sent me a picture she had taken at a nearby coffee shop. When I saw it, my smile disappeared. The man in the photo was a dead ringer for me. He had the same haircut, the same build, and even the same taste in clothes. He was sitting at a table, engrossed in a book, completely unaware that his picture was being taken. I felt a cold shiver run down my spine. Doppelgangers were supposed to be mythical, right? Just eerie coincidences. I told Laura it was probably just someone who looked like me, but I couldn't shake the uneasy feeling. A few days later, my girlfriend Lily mentioned she had seen me at a bar downtown. I hadn't set foot in that bar for months. She was adamant it was me, even describing the jacket I had worn to work that day. The same jacket that was hanging in my closet. I tried to laugh it off, but now I was starting to feel a bit paranoid. Things only got stranger from there. I began receiving texts from friends and colleagues, all saying they had seen me in places I hadn't been. Shopping malls, parks, even at work functions I hadn't attended. Each time the stories were the same. I was friendly, chatty, and unmistakably myself. But it wasn't me. One evening I decided enough was enough. I needed to find this double. I started frequenting the places where he had been spotted, hoping to catch a glimpse. Days turned into weeks with no success. I began to doubt my sanity. Maybe it was all just a series of bizarre coincidences. Maybe I was overreacting. Then one night I came home to find the lights on. I distinctly remembered turning them off before leaving. My heart pounded as I crept inside, fearing an intruder. But the apartment was empty, nothing out of place except for one thing. A note on the kitchen counter. Stop looking for me. A surge of anger rose within me. Who was this person and why was he messing with my life? I tore the note to shreds determined not to be intimidated, but the fear lingered. Someone who looked exactly like me had been in my home. Someone who knew I was looking for him. The next day at work, my boss called me into her office. She looked concerned, asking if everything was okay. Apparently I had missed an important meeting the previous day, but I knew I was there, taking notes, participating. I even remembered the discussions we had, Yet she insisted I wasn't. That night, I set up a camera in my living room, hoping to catch my doppelganger in the act. I barely slept, jumping at every noise, every creak of the floorboards. In the morning, I checked the footage. It showed me walking into the apartment, looking around, and then leaving again. Except I hadn't come home until much later. My doppelganger was real, and he was living my life. I started to lose track of what was real and what wasn't. Friends would ask about conversations I didn't remember having, places I didn't remember going. I began to isolate myself, fearing that I was losing my grip on reality. One evening while staring at my reflection in the bathroom mirror, I noticed something. A small scar above my eyebrow. I had gotten it in a bike accident when I was 12. I realized that if this imposter looked exactly like me, he must have that scar too. It was a small detail, but it was something only someone who had lived my life would have. Determined to confront him, I went to all the places he had been seen, asking around, showing the photograph Laura had taken. Finally, a barista recognized him and mentioned he was a regular, always coming in around the same time each week. I waited at the coffee shop, nerves on edge. Hours passed, and then there he was. Seeing him in person was like looking into a mirror. He saw me too, and for a moment, we just stared at each other. Then he smiled, a cold, knowing smile, and walked out. I followed him, determined to get answers. We ended up in a quiet park, and finally, he turned to face me. Why are you doing this? I demanded. Who are you? He just smiled again. I'm you. The you that you could have been. The you that took risks made different choices. The you that lived life to the fullest. I shook my head. That doesn't make any sense. It doesn't have to, he replied. Just know this. 
You can't escape me. I'm always going to be there, living the life you didn't. With that, he turned and walked away, leaving me standing in stunned silence. I haven't seen him since, but I know he's still out there. Living my life, making different choices, always one step ahead. If you ever see someone who looks exactly like you, don't ignore it. Don't dismiss it as a coincidence. Because sometimes, the scariest thing isn't a monster or a ghost. It's the thought that there might be another you out there, living a life you never chose. Part 2. The Strangeness Spreads After the unnerving encounter at the park, life didn't return to normal. If anything, it became even more surreal. Each day felt like I was wading deeper into a twilight zone. The doppelganger's shadow loomed over my every move, making me question everything I knew about myself and my reality. My paranoia intensified. I started avoiding places where he had been spotted, terrified of another encounter. Yet despite my best efforts to steer clear, I couldn't escape the whispers and sideways glances from friends and co-workers. It was like living in a fishbowl, constantly under scrutiny. One day, I overheard a conversation between two of my colleagues. They were talking about me, discussing how I had been seen at a bookstore downtown, chatting with the owner about a new novel. I hadn't been near that bookstore in years. The more I tried to explain that it wasn't me, the crazier I sounded. Even Lily was beginning to doubt me. She found a receipt from a restaurant I had never been to. The date and time on the receipt coincided with when I was supposedly at work. The look in her eyes shifted from confusion to suspicion. She started asking me where I had been, if I was hiding something. It hurt that she was questioning my honesty, but I couldn't blame her. Everything was becoming so confusing and surreal. One night, as I was getting ready for bed, I received a text from an unknown number. Stop looking for me or you'll regret it. My heart raced and my hands trembled as I stared at the message. I felt like I was being watched, hunted even. Sleep became a distant memory, and each creak of the floorboards in my apartment felt like a prelude to something horrific. Desperate for answers, I started digging into old family records, wondering if there was something I didn't know about my past. Maybe an unknown twin or a family secret that could explain this bizarre situation but my search yielded nothing unusual. I was the only child, and my family history was as boring and straightforward as I remembered. One evening, after yet another restless day, I decided to visit my parents. Maybe they had some insight, or at least could provide some comfort. I hadn't shared any of this with them, hoping to spare them the worry. But now, I felt I had no choice. When I arrived, my mother was her usual cheerful self, fussing over me and asking how things were going. My dad, always the quieter one, sat in his armchair, reading the newspaper. As I began to recount the strange events, their faces grew more serious. My mom kept glancing at my dad, who seemed unusually tense. Mom, Dad, is there something you're not telling me? I finally asked, frustration evident in my voice. My dad sighed deeply, folding his newspaper and setting it aside. Son, there's nothing we've kept from you. You're our only child. But, he paused, choosing his words carefully. Sometimes in life, things happen that we can't explain. This sounds like one of those times. His words were meant to comfort, but they only deepened my despair. If my parents didn't have answers, then who did? I left their house feeling more lost than ever. The next day at work, I couldn't focus. My boss noticed and called me into her office again. She was concerned about my performance, noting that I seemed distracted and unfocused. I wanted to tell her everything, but how could I? How could I explain that my life was being hijacked by someone who looked exactly like me? That night, I had a nightmare. I was in a room full of mirrors, each reflection showing a different version of myself. I tried to find the real me, but the reflections mocked me, their eyes gleaming with malice. I woke up drenched in sweat, the echoes of their laughter ringing in my ears. Determined to regain control, I decided to take a leave of absence from work. 
I needed time to figure this out without the added stress of my job. My boss reluctantly agreed, though I could see the skepticism in her eyes. With my newfound free time, I started retracing my steps, visiting every place my doppelganger had been seen. I talked to people, showed them the photograph, and tried to piece together his routine. It felt like a game of cat and mouse, with me always one step behind. One day, at a small bookstore, the owner recognized the photo. Yeah, he comes in here a lot, she said. Nice guy. Always buys the latest thrillers. It was unnerving to think that my double shared my taste in books. Was he trying to live my life better than I was? As I delved deeper, I began to notice a pattern. My doppelganger frequented places that I had once loved but had stopped visiting due to the pressures of adulthood. It was as if he was living the carefree life I had abandoned. In a moment of clarity, I decided to change my approach. Instead of avoiding places he had been, I would immerse myself in them. I started visiting my favorite spots again, hoping to reclaim my life from this imposter. At first it felt strange, almost like I was walking in someone else's shoes. But gradually, it began to feel right. Then, one evening I saw him again. He was at a bar I used to visit with friends. My heart raced as I watched him laugh and chat with the bartender. This time I didn't hesitate. I walked up to him and for a moment, he looked startled. Then that cold, knowing smile spread across his face. I told you to stop looking for me, he said, his voice eerily calm. Why are you doing this? I demanded. What do you want from me? He leaned closer, his eyes piercing into mine. I want you to understand that I'm the better version of you. The you that takes risks, that lives life to the fullest. You gave up on that, and now it's my turn. I felt a surge of anger and fear. You can't just take over my life, he shrugged. I already have. The sooner you accept it, the better. With that, he turned and walked away, leaving me standing there, trembling with rage and helplessness. I watched him disappear into the crowd, my mind racing with thoughts of how to reclaim my life from this mysterious double. As days turned into weeks, I continued my quest to understand and confront this doppelganger. I talked to more people, gathered more information, and slowly began to piece together a plan. I couldn't let him win. I had to fight for my own identity, my own life. In the midst of this chaos, I found unexpected allies. Some friends who had initially doubted me began to believe my story. They offered their support and helped me track his movements. With their help, I felt a glimmer of hope. Maybe, just maybe, I could find a way to confront him once and for all and reclaim the life that was rightfully mine. Part 3. The Confrontation The realization that my doppelganger was deliberately trying to usurp my life filled me with dread and determination. I needed to confront him and end this madness. With the help of my friends, we strategized to catch him. I meticulously retraced his steps, documenting every place he had been and every person he had interacted with. It was exhausting work, but I felt a renewed sense of purpose. Initially skeptical, my friends now rallied around me, providing much-needed support as we pieced together his routine. One evening at my favorite coffee shop, Jason, a close friend, shared a breakthrough. He had located where my doppelganger lived, a small apartment in a rundown part of town. Excitement and fear coursed through me. This was our chance. We staked out the apartment, taking turns watching for any sign of movement. It felt like a covert operation, the neighborhood silent and secretive. After several uneventful nights, we finally spotted him emerging from the building, uncannily resembling me. He went about his day unaware, mirroring my routines. I wanted to confront him immediately, but Jason cautioned patience. We needed a solid plan to confront him safely. The next day, we devised our strategy. Jason would remain outside while I entered his apartment to confront him. As evening approached, we took our positions. My nerves were on edge. This was the moment I had prepared for. Entering his apartment was surprisingly easy. The resemblance to my own life was uncanny, every detail meticulously replicated. He sat in the living room, reading a book. When he saw me, his surprise faded into a cold, knowing smile. I knew you'd come, he said calmly. 
Fury surged within me. Who are you? Why are you doing this? He set the book aside and stood, composed. I'm you. The version who took risks, made different choices. The one who didn't settle for a mundane life. His words stung. You can't just take over my life. I'm not taking it over, he replied, advancing. I'm living it the way you never dared to. You let fear control you, and now it's my turn. I'm happy with my life, I retorted, though doubt gnawed at me. He laughed bitterly. Are you? Look at yourself. You're consumed by fear, paranoia, and doubt. You've let life pass you by, and now you're blaming me for it. Anger flared. I'm not going to let you continue this. Leave and never come back. He regarded me thoughtfully. And if I don't? What then? I clenched my fists. Then I'll expose you for the fraud you are. He sighed, disappointed. You still don't understand. I'm as real as you are. Deny me all you want, but until you accept that part of yourself, you'll never be free. Before I could reply, he turned and left, his words echoing in the empty apartment. Jason found me afterward, concern etched on his face. Are you okay? What happened? I shook my head, overwhelmed. I don't know, man. I just don't know. We drove back in silence, his questions hanging heavy in the air. My doppelganger's words haunted me, challenging everything I thought I knew about myself. Who was he really? And what did his existence mean for my identity? That night, sleep eluded me. His accusations echoed in my mind. Had I let fear hold me back? Doubt gnawed at me, making it hard to focus. In the days that followed, I struggled to find normalcy. My doppelganger's presence lingered, a constant reminder of the chaos. Lily noticed the strain, her concern palpable. I tried to shield her, but the situation strained our relationship. One evening, she took my hand, determined. We need to figure this out together. Her support was a lifeline. I realized I couldn't face this alone. With Lily's encouragement, I sought therapy to unravel the chaos. It was slow progress, but it helped me confront my fears and doubts. Life gradually stabilized. My relationships improved, and I felt more grounded. Confronting my doppelganger had forced me to confront my fears and insecurities, ultimately allowing me to grow and redefine myself. Looking back, I realized he wasn't a threat but a challenge. A challenge to live my life fully, to embrace risks, and to be true to myself. And for that, I was oddly grateful. Part 4. The Aftermath and Acceptance In the aftermath of encountering my doppelganger, life settled into a new rhythm, marked by a blend of relief, introspection, and lingering questions. The initial shock of discovering someone who mirrored my existence in unsettling ways gradually gave way to a process of acceptance and understanding. Throughout this surreal ordeal, Lily remained my steadfast companion and pillar of support. Her unwavering belief in me provided stability amid the uncertainty. Together, we navigated the aftermath of my doppelganger's intrusion into our lives, strengthening our bond and finding solace in each other's presence. Therapy played a pivotal role in my journey towards acceptance and healing. Through introspection and guided sessions, I began unraveling the complexities of my own identity and the psychological impact of encountering my doppelganger. These sessions provided a safe space to explore the doubts, fears, and existential questions that surfaced during this bizarre experience. Gradually, I gained clarity and perspective, learning to reconcile the unsettling presence of my doppelganger with my sense of self. Rebuilding trust with friends and colleagues proved to be another significant challenge. Many had encountered my doppelganger during his impersonation of me, leading to confusion and strained relationships. I took proactive steps to clarify the situation, openly discussing the bizarre circumstances and reaffirming my authenticity. Through candid conversations and shared experiences, trust was gradually restored and relationships strengthened. Reflecting on this extraordinary experience, I realized that my doppelganger had been a catalyst for profound personal growth and self-discovery. His uncanny resemblance and intrusive presence forced me to confront long-standing insecurities, fears, 
and aspects of my identity that I had previously ignored or downplayed. The encounter pushed me beyond my comfort zone, challenging me to reassess my life choices and embrace a deeper understanding of myself. Acceptance did not come easily. There were moments of doubt, introspection, and existential questioning as I grappled with the implications of my doppelganger's existence. Yet with time and introspection, I learned to embrace the complexities of my identity. I recognized that my doppelganger symbolized not just a physical likeness, but also a reflection of untapped potential and unexplored possibilities within myself. As life gradually returned to normalcy, I carried forward the lessons learned from this extraordinary encounter. I embraced a mindset of resilience and adaptability, knowing that unexpected challenges could arise at any moment. The experience had taught me the importance of staying true to myself, even in the face of uncertainty and adversity. Occasionally I wondered about my doppelganger's whereabouts and his own journey of self-discovery. Had he found his path distinct from mine? The unanswered questions lingered, but I had made peace with the uncertainty. His presence had left an indelible mark on my life, a reminder of the transient nature of identity and the complexities of human existence. Looking ahead, I felt a sense of optimism and gratitude. Despite the turmoil and confusion, the encounter had sparked a transformative journey of self-discovery and personal growth. I approached each day with renewed vigor, cherishing the ordinary moments and embracing the possibilities that lay ahead. My encounter with my doppelganger had been a surreal and challenging chapter in my life story. Yet through adversity, I had emerged stronger and more resilient. I carried forward a profound sense of gratitude for the support of loved ones, the guidance of therapy, and the resilience of the human spirit. As I reflected on my journey, I realized that confronting my doppelganger had been about more than just resolving a mystery. It had been a journey of self-acceptance and empowerment, reclaiming my identity and embracing the complexities of my existence. I had faced my fears head on and emerged with a deeper understanding of myself and the world around me. In the end, I embraced the lessons learned from my encounter with my doppelganger, a reminder to live authentically, embrace uncertainty, and cherish the ongoing journey of self-discovery.